Hello. For this demonstration, I will be showing you how to use the SysView CICS option to do CICS thresholding and transaction purging. I will um, start off a bad CICS transaction, determine what it's doing, and then finally purge the transaction. First of all, I'm going to show you the uh, threshold definition that I have created specifically for this transaction. The DRV1 transactions are bad transaction. I am going to do an edit here to show you what this looks like. It's a upper rule type. The variable is CPU time, which is CPU seconds. So I've got the problem limit set at three CPU seconds. So once this transaction hits three CPU seconds, it will be in problem status. I told SysView to put it in warning status when 65% of the problem limit is hit, which is 1.95. And SysView calculates that warm warning limit for you. The trigger level is status, which means I want to trigger this exception when the status changes, such as when it goes from normal to warning or from warning to problem. I've set a 99 exception priority, which will show it high on C alerts. You can disable this also if you don't want this uh, particular threshold anymore. You can also use a Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, day of week um, setting to tell SysView to only run this during certain days of the week, like maybe you only run it want to run it during the market, Monday through Friday, and not on the weekends. You can also tell SysView that I only want to process this threshold um, starting at a certain time in the morning and ending at a certain time at night, let's say market open and market close. On the right here, we have the actions that you can take. For instance, you can write a WTO message to the console if this threshold breaches. You can log an exception to the CSCS address base DD name for SysView. You can write an SMS record to a SysView log stream for CICS, and additionally, a PARMLIDE member will tell you whether you can write the SMS record to the MAN data sets. If you have Ops MVS, you can set this to yes, and an event notification of the threshold breach will be sent to Ops MVS, where you can then use the product to take further action. You can also send an SMMP trap by setting this to yes and giving it a list of IP addresses or host names in a member. In addition, you can run an iMod, which is Rex compiled code. SysView comes with several different iMods out of the box that you can choose from, or you can write your own. You would just set run iMod to yes. You would give it the name of the module here, and then make that module available to the SysView step live or link list. In addition, you can run a capture. You can run a set of CICS um, SysView screens having to do with um, the problems such as C tasks, uh, C weights, um, C life, and those captures can happen exactly when the threshold is breached, it's giving, giving you relevant information at that point in time. The capture interval allows you to do a throttle so that you only do one capture um, within 15 minutes, and that is the default. You can also automatically cancel a transaction with this feature. You would just set cancel transaction to one of the options, and I'm going to show you what those are. Up here, you can say auto, which will tell SysView to run a series of options in a certain order. So SysView would try a purge first. If that doesn't work, then a force, then a cancel. Same thing you would do manually, but it will do it automatically for you. Or if you don't want to use auto, you can say, I want to force purge the transaction. So you would just type force here. Now I'm going to put this back to none. And then the cancel limit says um, it's set initially to the same as problem limit. So SysView would cancel the transaction automatically using whatever method when it hit three seconds of CPU time. But you can also set this to four. So maybe you don't want to do the automatic cancel until it hits four seconds of CPU. So I'm going to save this. And um, I'm going to show you our C alert screen. This is the screen that's going on right now. So we do have some problem statuses, but these are lifetime. There's one CPU time um, breach. Um, and then we have some order transactions that have violated um, some threshold. I'm going to show you um, what happens when we, ru we start running this bad transaction. So as you can see here, we have a rate of 28 transactions per second. We have CPU time, lifetime, suspend time metrics. Um, and so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go to the task screen. This is the C task screen for this region. And you can see we've got some stuff running here. We've got um, order transactions that are in IC wait status. 
So what I'm going to do is go over here to this um, CSCS region, which is the same one we're looking at, and I'm going to start this bad transaction. And you're going to start to see the DRV1 transaction run, and there it is. DRV1, there's the task, 10372. It's uh, running this program, CADM file C. It's doing FCIO wait on the ORD4 file. And as you can see over here, it's already got 105,000 I.O. requests. So we know this transaction is doing a lot of I.O. right away, and we know what DD name. Um, and then we can see here that it's already, it's in warning status for CPU time. Remember, when, it, when the CPU time hits um, a certain number of seconds, it starts at, at yellow warning. We've already breached the um, lifetime, and now we have breached the CPU time of three seconds. Now we're at 3.51 seconds. So we can use SysU to see what this is doing. Um, we know that it's taken a lot of I.O. requests. We can um, scoot over here to see what, it, um, what commands that it's doing. We're doing a read next for this DRV1. Doing a lot of, uh, it basically is just browsing the file. Um, but it's doing a lot of um, I.O.s and it's taking a lot of CPU. So we can also use SysView to isolate the transaction. I can do a select on the tran, contain D, for instance. So I just want to see the transactions that start with D. So there, that's giving me all the order transactions that are running and that bad DRV1 transaction. So now what I want to do is I want to take a look at, you know, some commands that will show me what is going on with um, this transaction. So I can do C file. And I know here that ORD, ORD, one, ORD 4 file is taking 1.2 million requests. Do you see that? And 785,000 EXCPs and 1.21 million browsers right there. So we can take a look at LSR buff. And looks like we have a pretty good hit ratio. So it, it could be, you know, tuned a little more as far as the, as the vSAM part of it. I have a screen called vSAM that you can look at the vSAM file performance, the number of exceptions, um, LSR pools, how many records, everything that you want to see. For this ORD4 file, we can see that it's doing a lot of stuff here. Um, then in C files, you can actually go to the ORD4 file here and you can say, I want to see who's using this transaction. You can do a use command. And so it is showing that this task, DRV1, is doing a lot of browsers um, on this file and taking a lot of CPU. So let's go to C alerts. C alerts is showing that the DRV1 transaction has exceeded the CPU time. So what you can do here is you can see the rule. You can do the RUL, and you can see the rule that has been um, violated. So that took us right to that CPU time threshold that I had set up. Now I can go back. Um, the other thing that you can do here is um, see what the variable is like. I can, I can actually acknowledge that I'm working on this transaction. Um, I can um, look at the X log, so, and I can see what the, uh, the rule is, which, which I just showed you. But I also can look at the variable. This is the variable. It's a CPU time used by transaction. And then I can look at log. And this is the exception log for this transaction. I can go down here. This is on this exception log log string for CICS. I can select it. And I can see the whole um, exception record here. It gives me some more information. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the CTASK command, and I'm going to purge this transaction. I'm going to go ahead and select it specifically so that I make sure I purge the right transaction. I'm going to try a purge first and see if that works, because that causes the least, least amount of trouble. Um, so, so the purge, the purge did not work. So, you know, on some transactions, um, purge is not going to work because that's the easiest method. I'm going to try a force. Yes, to confirm. The request has been processed. So now, as you can see, the the transaction is is gone. So that is a demonstration on how you can use SysView to identify a problem transaction see what it's doing, and then purge that transaction from the system. Thank you so much.